Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Again, my name is Takeda Hogan Claiborne from the Law Office of TMXP. I'm here making this video for you. You are just a few steps away from receiving a free special report entitled The Shocking Truth About Who Gets Your Kids, Your House, Car, and Money When You Die. But first, I want to begin by asking you two simple questions. Number one, do you have a will? If you do have a will, that's great. If you do not have a will, then question number two is for you. Do you think you need a will? If you do not, then why not? You might think that I'm not old enough, but anyone 18 years or older and mentally competent can have a will. Now, while minors can and do own property, they cannot make a valid will. You may also say, I don't own anything. But really? You know, if you die and you have a car, you have furniture, you have a TV, you have clothing, you have jewelry, all of those items will be considered your property. Or you might say, I'm not married, I have no children. But what if you happen to be engaged? Then your fiancé gets nothing. And let's say your parents are divorced. Then your divorced parents, who don't get along with each other, each inherit a half interest in your car and that furniture and your TV and your clothing, whatever it may be. And they don't happen to get along, but they will have to get along to sell the property. Is that really what you want? Okay, you say, well, I don't plan to die anytime soon. And I just feel uncomfortable thinking about it. Whatever the reason may be, you're not alone. Most Americans don't have a will. Actually, a 2007 national poll conducted by Bank Rate Inc. found that over 57% of Americans do not have a will. What does that mean? If you don't have a will, what exactly does that mean? It means that your property shall be controlled by the laws of intestacy. And what is that? It refers to any person who dies without a valid will, as well as to any of the deceased property which does not have instructions for its ownership. So without a valid will, state laws control who receives your property at death, as well as the exact amount that is given to each person. Thereby, your heirs are determined by law. Let's look at a hypothetical situation. Let's say we have decedent Dave. And decedent Dave did not make a will. He was survived by his wife and minor children. If the minor children are co-heirs with the surviving spouse, that means a guardian must be appointed for them. And the surviving wife will not be free to sell the property without first getting the permission of the probate court. This is going to require filing lots of paperwork, hiring an attorney to handle the paperwork, and leave less money for the wife and the kids to live on. What if the children have special needs? Special needs of heirs with disabilities may not be met. So without a will, how is it determined who receives your property? Again, the laws of the state of domicile of the defeated, this is the place where you reside, will determine who gets your personal property. What about your real property? Now, the laws of the state where the real property is located will determine who receives your real property. For example, maybe you live in Texas, which is a community property state, but you own a house in Tennessee, which does not recognize community property. Let's say you have decided to draft a will. You know, that's great. This would allow you to control what happens to your property. So what we actually are going to discuss in this video is estate planning, which is planning for the transfer of a decedent's estate to take place either at or before death. It also provides for the handling of a person's property, which um, concerns why he's still alive, 
if he cannot handle that property himself. Estate planning includes the designing and preparation of a will and the naming of a personal representative, the making of appropriate pre-death gifts, probate of the will, the administration of the decedent's estate, and distribution of the assets. Also, the preparation and filing of all necessary tax returns. But good estate planning does these things in a way that is an advantage to the heirs and the beneficiaries. And it also takes into account of the advantages of favorable tax treatment whenever possible. Let's begin by defining some key terms. Beginning with heirs. Heirs are persons entitled by law to a share of the estate of a decedent who died intestate. Sometimes the heir is also the next of kin, which is, could be the decedent's spouse or the nearest blood relative if he or she has no spouse. Again, the laws determine who your heirs will be if you die without a will or called the laws of intestacy, also known as laws of intestate succession. What about beneficiaries? These are the persons that are entitled to receive a share of a decedent's estate under the terms of that decedent's will. Traditionally, there are two kinds of beneficiary. You have a devisee who receives real property and a legatee who receives personal property. The property you have or possess at the time of your death is defined as your estate. It can consist of real property, which is land and the things permanently attached to the land, like the buildings and the houses, or personal property, which is everything that is not defined as real property, like cars, diamonds, stocks and bonds, money, clothing, furniture, all of these things, for example, of personal property. We'll take a closer look at just how property is defined in the next video. Okay. So you have some property and you have some idea about who you want to receive the property at your death. Now we have to turn those ideas into something that the courts can use to make sure those ideas become real to you. And the way to do this is by drafting a will. Wait a minute. What exactly is a will? A will is a written declaration of your intended distribution of property after death. If the will is valid, it will serve as instructions to the court on how to distribute the property, also called a testament. Let's take a minute and discuss the will. In the will, you, the testator, which is the person who has decided to make a will, specifies who will receive what portion of his property. Again, a person who receives a gift from the decedent's estate is a beneficiary. His gift may be of real property, in which case it is called a devise, and he, as a beneficiary, is a devisee. Or the gift may be of personal property, other than money, in which case it is called a bequeath. If it is of money, it is called a legacy. But in both cases, the recipient is called a legacy. A will can also name a person to serve as a decedent's executor or personal representative to sign the documents and carry out the wishes of the decedent. Needless to say, this executor should be someone that the testator trusts and has absolute confidence in. Since this person will operate under very little supervision from the probate court. If the will doesn't name an executor, or if the person named as an executor is not able to function as such, then the probate court will name someone to serve as a personal representative of the decedent. If the court appoints him, he is called the administrator, and he does not have the same autonomy that an executor has. We will see that demonstrated later on when we get to a discussion of personal representatives in another video. You must know that it's not enough just to have a will, but a testator must have a valid will. Now, let's determine when a will is valid. 
A will is valid if, number one, it meets the formal requirements for its creation. And number two, it meets the formal requirements for its execution. As well as number three, it does not contain any contradictions, ambiguities, or confusing words or phrases that might make the will invalid. For example, let's talk about for creation. For creation, it requires a testator or testratus, if it's a female, who has legal capacity, that's of, of sound mind, understand what making a will is about, and also have testamentary capacity. They know who their family members are and what property they have and have some idea about which family members should receive which item of property. And for valid execution, the will must be either one of three types of wills. It could be a formal will, written and signed by the testator, and by two witnesses, or a holographic will, written entirely in the handwritten of the testator, or a non competitive will. This is spoken or recorded words when the testator knows his death to be imminent. Now, here in Texas, your formal will actually goes through a um, execution procedure that includes publication. This is where the testator announces that this is his last will and testament. And also subscription, where you have the signing of the will by the testator, and attestation, where you have the signing of the two or more witnesses. Or if the testator wants to avoid this process, he can make a holographic will. Or under some circumstances, um, there has been times when you can have uh, been allowed to have a non-competed will in Texas. Don't forget that that third requirement is also required for a valid will, where you have no confusion. No contradictions or ambiguity. Let me give you an example. Let's say we have a father who has a handwritten will naming his three children to receive all of his property. And also within that same will, it is stated to his son to be my one and only beneficiary. So which is it? Is it to all his sons or his one son? Now, a valid will, once you have it, can accomplish many things and avoid most of those problems we have talked about earlier as resulting from the failure to have a will. So what did we learn today? Number one, if you don't have a will, your property shall be controlled by the laws of intestacy, which is also known as the laws of intestate succession. We covered several key terms, such as heirs, beneficiaries, Estate planning, estate, real, and personal property, a will, and several other key terms. Number two, we also discussed how to determine if a will is valid. Number three, as well as the three different types of wills. The next video, we should begin reviewing property and the laws of how it relates to wills and probate. Thank you for your attention. The next video, we should begin reviewing property and the laws of how it relates to wills and probate. Thank you for your attention. See you in the next video.